This video is going to walk you through how to make a pretty good IB graph using Excel. And the way we're going to start is I've got all my data right here. This is the data that I'm going to use to make the graph. I've got my independent variable data right there. I've got my dependent variable data right there. And I've got the uncertainties in my dependent variable right there. I also have a column for the uncertainties in my independent variable. But I'm going to assume that those are really, really tiny in whatever experiment I did. They're very small, and so I don't even have to worry about plotting them. OK, so now that I've got my data input in there, I have to make a graph. And the way to do that is you go to this Insert tab. And in the Insert tab, you can see it brings up this whole new panel. And you want to make a scatter plot. You don't want to make a bar graph or any of that stuff, a pie chart, and fancy stuff. You want to make a scatter plot. So scatter plots are right here, and you click down, and you want to make one of these, not with any of this fancy lines. You don't want lines collecting your, connecting your data. That's, no, 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 no. That's connect the dot weird stuff. You want to make a scatter plot, just like that. And Excel has made one for you, which was nice of it, except that's not really the data that you wanted to plot. Uh, if you can see, it, it plotted two sets of data. And one set is totally meaningless. So what we got to do is we have to tell Excel which data to plot. So you click on the data, one of those data sets, and then you right click on it. That'll bring down this thing, and you click on select data. All right, and you can see it's got all these different data sets that it's plotting. And I'm going to remove all except for one, and I'm going to edit that one. And it brings up this panel. Now, if I click right here on this funny little thing on the right, that's going to allow me to select the things to plot on the x-axis, on my independent variable axis. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to click, I'm going to highlight all of my independent variable data right here. Okay, so now it knows to put that on the x-axis, and I'm going to click on the series y values, a little button right here, and I'm going to select my dependent variable, because that's what should go on my y-axis. And if I do that, boom! All right, it plotted my data. It's a pretty good start. Okay, however, it's got this little thing right here. It's got a legend. I don't need a legend, I just have one set of dots. So I'm gonna get rid of the legend by clicking on it and then hitting delete. And that's better. All right, it's starting to look like a real graph. There's some things missing. Um, I don't have axis titles on my vertical or my horizontal axis. Also, my axes, they don't end with an arrow. Axes should end with arrows. Um, your math teacher would be having a conniption fit right now if they saw that. Also, the data is blue. That's weird. Let's make the data black. Let's make a black and white chart here. So I'm going to click on that data, and I'm going to go over here to the right, and you can see there's this marker thing. And I'm going to tell it to make the marker black. Oh, it did that. Oh, nice. Um, now, they're outlined by blue, which is weird. Thanks, Excel. We don't want that. So I can also go to the marker options. Oh, wait. No, excuse me. Down to the border section. And I can tell it to make a black border. And now we just have black dots. Wonderful. OK. We still need to deal with the error bars, though. My graph doesn't have error bars. That's a bummer. So what I can do to fix that is I click on the chart. OK. And then I go up here to Chart Tools Design. And I'm going to add a chart element. You can see these are a bunch of elements of the chart that you can imagine. And one of them is error bars. Now, Excel, well, Excel did not take IB physics. It doesn't know what we want in terms of uncertainty bars or error bars, whatever you want to call them. So we got to go down here to the more error bars option. Okay, and that brings up this right hand panel. First of all, we want the error bars to be black. Um, and if you look over here, <laughs> at the graph that it's made, it tried to be helpful. Excel did try to be helpful, and it plotted x, uh, or excuse me, it plotted uncertainty bars in the horizontal and in the vertical. We don't want uncertainty bars in the horizontal, right? Our independent variable, the way that we're doing this, our independent variable did not have uncertainty bars. So I'm going to click on those and hit delete. Goodbye. The it, error bars in the dependent variable are not the right size. So we got to figure out a way to make them better. It's a little hard to click on them. So I'm going to make my graph bigger. And click on those error bars. 
And then over here in the panel, I'm going to go down and I'm going to select for the error amount, I'm going to select custom. And I'm going to tell it how big those error bars should be by clicking on specify value. The positive error value, I click on this little button right there, and then I highlight the uncertainties in my spreadsheet. Okay, and same for the negative. I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm telling it how big the error bars should be in the positive and in the negative. Click OK. Ah, oh, thank you, Excel. It made those error bars the exact right size. And you can check that. If you look, I got an especially large error bar when the independent variable equals 7. And if you look at the data, that's what I should expect. When the independent variable is 7, I should have an uncertainty of plus or minus 3. All right, and it did it. How nice. Okay, let's mess with the title. So the title, well, it should be something like independent variable, whatever that may be, versus dependent variable, right? Wrong. No. I did that on purpose. I was trying to pick trick you. Okay, it should be dependent variable versus independent variable. Y versus X. Good on you if you figured that out, if you caught that. Okay, then I'm going to go over here. Now, I need to get arrows on my chart. So I'm going to go back over to the design, and I'm going to select my axes. Okay, primary horizontal axis. Well, primary horizontal axis, axis options. Well, it should end, if I look down at this right-hand panel, it should end with an arrow. And you can pick any of these arrows, as long as, as long as it looks like an arrow, it's okay. Um, so it ends with an arrow. Also, I want my axis to be black. I don't want it to be gray. Maybe I'll make it larger. I'm going to increase the width a little bit to maybe two. Okay, now it's looking like an axis. Also, uh, the font. I can change the font of the numbers. I like 20th century. I think it's a nice clear font. Also, I can make it black. I can bold it so that it's easy to read. Maybe make the numbers a little bit bigger so they're easy to read. And then I'll do the same thing, the same process with the horizontal axis. So I want it to be black. I made it two in width, and it had an end arrow on it. Looks nice. Uh, the font, going to change it to 20th century. Bold. A little bit larger. Okay, and make it black. All right. Looking pretty good. Um, I need titles on my axes. Need to know what these axes are. So I go over here to the add chart element, axis titles, primary horizontal. Well, whatever that is, that's my independent variable. And you also need to say what units it's in, whatever they may be. Highlight that. Change the font to something nice. Da -da -da. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. And then I'll go and do the same thing for the vertical axis. And highlight all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, I can see when I was fooling around, um, the chart changed a bit. Changed in a way I don't particularly like. Um, yeah, I've lost, I've got my data kind of scrunched up. And there's different ways to change that. I can change the size of the table and it'll adjust. Um, but what you can also do, if you don't like the way that it's adjusting it, if you want to have consistent... Um, uh, a range on your horizontal axis or your vertical axis, you can go over to the axis options. And I believe, let's see, where can I find that part? Axis options, yes, you can change it. So that the maximum is, say, well, 12 sounds nice. And then minimum of zero, so it won't change. 
All right, and I want the units to always be two. So no matter what, no matter how I change my axis, it's always going to look the same. Or no matter how I change the size of my graph, that won't change. And I can do the same with the vertical as well. Okay. All right. Now, what we'll do is we want to put this into a lab. So I'm going to click on this chart. And then I'm going to go over to Word. So I clicked on the chart and then hit Control C. Then I'll copy it. And then I go over to Word. I figure out where I want to put my graph and hit Control V to paste. And there it is. Now I've got my graph inside of my lab report. And I can change the size of it if I want to. Make it larger so that it's nice for Mr. Tyndall's very old eyes to read. And there we go. Got a beautiful Excel-made IB-appropriate graph in my lab report.